Time now to bring Mr. Gavaskar and Snehal into the show. Good evening to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Gavaskar, if I can quickly come to you first. India didn't manage to win the title, but the way that they played in the entire tournament, beating a team like Australia in the semi-finals, you would say that this tournament will be remembered perhaps as a watershed moment of sorts for Indian women's cricket. It's a and it should be because seeing the way they have played, uh, they are playing the, the combination of parties that... Uh, uh, that uh, women uh, uh, bring is, is quite exotic. And seeing the way uh, they, they, they have done that, I think there'll be a lot, lot more following uh, for them in, in, the, in, the, in the future. And most importantly, I think a lot of young girls, female cricketers, women cricketers, who will take up the game because of the encouragement that they've seen that this team has got. All right, let's go over to Snehal now. Snehal, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. It, it was obviously a case of so close yet so far for Team India this time around. But yet there are so many things that need to be celebrated as far as this team is concerned. What were the big positives according to you in this entire campaign? Good evening, Akash. And the biggest positive has been the visibility and the team's ability to perform under pressure. It is one thing that this tournament has been broadcast by the ICC. Uh, so many matches were live. Those matches which weren't live were live streamed. So there was a huge opportunity uh, for the Indian cricket team to be visible. But it's not just that. They had to take that opportunity. They had to perform well, which is exactly what they did at the back end of the tournament when they beat New Zealand in a quarterfinal, Australia in a semi-final, and really gave England a run for the money. So the fighting spirit of the team and the visibility of the tournament are the two biggest takeaways. Of course, but you have to also, Snehal, spare a thought for the likes of uh, Mitali and Julan. Uh, last time that these two legends of Indian women's cricket were playing an ICC World Cup, and they were, of course, they gave their very best, both these cricketers. But you have to feel that, you know, they will always remember this again as, you know, falling at the last hurdle, something that will perhaps haunt them for the rest of their lives. It could be true because uh, when Julan picked up those three wickets in the first innings and helped restrict England to 228, you got the feeling that, you know, this might be one of those fairy tale endings which so many sports people look for. But sports is a very cruel, cruel uh, game. It can be very cruel uh, to even its greatest servants like Mithali Raja and Julan Goswami. But I don't think this will haunt them as much because of the impact it has already created. And they know that they have pretty much done as well as they could. They just fell short by a slender margin of 10 runs. But uh, they will feel at peace knowing that this tournament has a legacy, unlike the tournament of 2005, which reached the final, which pretty much nobody remembers now. Absolutely. That's a very, very pertinent point uh, that you make there, Snegal. The, the final of 2005, again, it was uh, Mithali who was the captain at that time. India again fell at the final hurdle. That, not a lot of people remember that particular campaign, but this is one campaign that will be remembered for a very, very long time. And, of course, budding cricketers will always look back at this team, just like perhaps, you know, a lot of male cricketers look back at perhaps the 83 win when Kapil Dev lifted uh, the trophy uh, in, at Lords itself. Uh, let's quickly go back to Mr. Gavaskar now. Mr. Gavaskar, what was really good to see in this entire campaign was the incredible support that the team received from both fans and celebrities you know on social media etc but do you think that this trend of people coming out and supporting the women's team is perhaps limited only to big tournaments you would say that the team needs this kind of support in the future when they're not playing a big tournament they need it all the time just like the men's team gets it all the time yes i think so i think uh, we need support uh, fans or from uh, the organizers, the authorities. Because that's the one way you, you work that much harder. And certainly, I think uh, after the following that they have uh, generated, sure the uh, Indian women's uh, cricket team uh, will get uh, followers of where they are playing and in which tournament they are playing. All right, Snehal, uh, you know, one interesting thing that we mentioned in that package of ours is that perhaps one thing that is waiting for the girls when they come back home to India, apart from, of course, a rousing welcome, are perhaps endorsement deals. And that is a very, very important feather in any sportsperson's cap, you know, the, the, a very important facet. That is something that, you know, hasn't happened really in the past for women uh, cricketers. Is it something that cricketers talk to each other about and discuss when they meet how, you know, the male cricketers walk away with the plum endorsements, but they don't come uh, the way of the women's cricketers? 
Well, I wouldn't really be sure because when I was playing uh, endorsement deals, like you said, four female cricketers were uh, almost non-existent. There was just, you know, yeah. Mitali Raj did one in between. But uh, this current crop of generators, certainly, this current crop of cricketers yeah. c- certainly has reason to talk about them because now definitely more and more brands are going to be interested in hi- uh, hiring these female cricketers as their uh, spawn as their role models. But you have to remember that there is a huge market. because there is so many female specific products in the indian market mm. which need brand ambassadors like these and they're just waiting for sports people like sindhu and uh, deepa karmarkar to stand up and make these kind of performances and i'm sure they're going to pick some of these cricketers up now absolutely uh let's quickly go back to mr gavaskar now mr gavaskar remember asking you to give the girls a message i think it was before the semi final stage now that they have finished as runners up made the country very very proud what would your message be for the girls well i think what i'll say to uh, mithali and and the team is that uh, very well played uh, in sport they'll be winners they'll be losers uh, uh, there'll be so much to learn from uh, this uh, particular game in the finals uh, Uh, to take you through and take you forward for the uh, for the future engagements uh, but uh, you have made uh, all the cricket followers in india very very proud of uh, your performances your deeds uh, i think the way you have played the way you all have carried yourself i think you all have been you know you you, you have uh, you got the country absolutely enamored uh, by uh, your performances uh, so well done and uh, and 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 got speed uh, for the future All right. Uh, one final question to Snehal. Snehal, is this the biggest shot in the arm that Indian women's cricket has ever got? Absolutely, without a doubt. The visibility that this tournament has provided to female cricketers, and in turn, the performance that they have put in. You mean uh, yesterday? I met a fan who told me he has paid a hundred pounds for a twenty-pound ticket to watch this match, and mm. he. The best part was that he told me, I paid hundred pounds for a men's match, so why can't I pay hundred pounds for a women's match? people are now looking at women's cricket as just cricket mm. and that is the biggest achievement that this tournament can achieve